hopefully we get something good out of the third pack. Like that. Oh good, it passed oh wait, an overwhelming <laughs> stampede. <laughs> well <laughs> uh, asking you shall receive, right? No, now we got two ways to make our like all dudes deck good, right? So I don't, there's I don't think there's any justification for taking any of anything these anything other than the overwhelming stampede at this point. It sucks to pass pacifism. And Stormfront Pegasus. And but, Silver Ranger. But overwhelming stampede is um one of the best cards in the I set. Mean, look at these cards here. There's like there's this is the first pick, then maybe like this or this and then that's also good here, here. Wow, there's so many high pick well this is not that high. But there's a high chance that we're gonna wheel something we like here. I'm expecting that we get back the Sylvan Ranger. There's a reasonable chance of that. Okay. Okay. Or the big worm. Well, uh let's uh, take over on. Alright. Holy crap. Hey, Vengeful Archon. That's I interesting. To be fair, the last video that we had, I drafted a white red deck with Felski and we got past a Vengeful Archon in pack three as well. And yesterday I did a draft by myself and I also got past a Vengeful Archon. <laughs> this is three drafts in a row where I got past a Vengeful Archon in so pack three on pick two. So did you play it both times? I played it every time. <laughs> yeah. Well, Plan B is Wild Griffin or Splash of Doom Blade, and all we have at this point to splash with is the Cultivate. So, is our plan just big monsters and get them? Yeah. Okay. We're taking the Vengeful Archon here. Well, this is unexciting. I wish half the cards in the other packs weren't here. Are we taking the bear? I don't know. I mean, we have a bunch of bears already. Looks like it, there's a lot of black going on. How many playables do we have? I mean,. I think we could take another sideboard solemn offering, but we have a solemn offering. Do we have a solemn offerings yet? No, we don't, right? We have a, nope. we have a naturalize. Uh, we could take like bears and go like the super bear aggro plan, or just like cut off stupid cards like howling banshee. I think at this point you want to take the bear because, looking up at what we've got so far, I count about nineteen cards that are mildly playable or better. Sure. I think we actually need to be more cards in core sets. Um, well, uh, I think Condemn is the best card here. I mean, we have like zero removal as is. Like, yeah. we, we're splashing a bolt as our only removal spell. Condemn is better than Excommunicate, and I'm not a fan of Yavimaya Worm. Yeah, I soured a lot on Yavimaya Worm. I actually like Excommunicate quite a lot. You like it more than but Condemn? Con and I do. It does fit our pack. Not like Condemn that much, but. It, this does fit our aggro plan too. Condemn costing one is kind of. Uh, Relevant. I mean, I've. I like excommunicate a lot more than other people. I think I've actually first picked it in the past, which is kind of sad, but I think it was correct. Um, I think that condemn is the best card here, but that people shouldn't uh, yeah shouldn't look down and excommunicate. Right. I, I I'm gonna take it. I think here. we're taking the condemn. Oh yeah, I should be cutting some of these cards so I don't have to look at them. Well, we got a bunch of sacred rolls and a cheaper sacred wolf. Well, a better Sacred Wolf in some opinion. Well, it comes down to Garrus Companion, or do you like Warlord's Axe? Uh, not in this deck. We, we have a lot of stuff that ties up our mana late game. We don't, I don't want too many heavy things. High Disappointed Sting. High Nature Spiral. Uh, I'll find the damn Canyon Minotaur. At this point, I see no reason not to take the Garrus Companion. You're yeah. right about the Warlord's Axe. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly what we want. We want a faster curve, and we have a bunch of nutty ways to like make stupid, stupid draws with uh, with our early with our early creatures. So cheaper creatures are always better here. Oh my god. Okay, well, there's giant spider and there's giant growth. Giant yeah. spider is really good because it can totally shut down certain decks like ours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I mean, we also have like very limited tricks. Yeah, Giant Growth is very good with Garrick's Companions. And in a white-green deck, it fits perfectly. You come out way ahead if you attack a Garrick's Companion to a bear and you have Giant Growth. But I'm going to go on the plan of Giant Spider shuts down so many decks that... And we passed so many blue cards, we're probably in... like The deck that we're probably going to lose to is the white-blue deck. Yeah, it's either Giant Spider or Plummet, and Giant Spider is always going to be good. Yeah, I mean, it's a main deck card versus Plummet is a sideboard card. I'm going to take it here. And our, it kind of fills up our four drop slot. We're a little heavy, but it's not too bad considering we have Cultivate Land or else. We're okay. All right. There well, there's the Muddy Leap. That's the trick that I really want. Yeah. Goes and well with our bears and our Garrus companions. Yep. We have no other tricks at this point. 
I don't see a compelling other card to take. I mean, again, I see late pick mine rods. Maybe uh, people feel differently about mine rod than I do. But anyways, like the rest of these cards are not that awesome. And Goblin Tunneler is a n sort of funny like combo-y card in a niche deck, and we're not going to consider it at all. So just something to remember if you see like a bunch of fiery hellhounds. Um, okay, now we've got nothing. Nothing. So um, we could, could cut a Volshock Berserker or protect our Crystal Ball from Manic Vandal. Or you could take the Hunter's Feast and have it as a sideboard card in case you play against the Lava Axe deck. Yeah, no, I, I'm going <laughs> to cut this, <laughs> this Volshock Berserker. <laughs> uh, we got a sideboard nature, back to nature. We could hack the Cloud Elemental, which is pretty late. Oh. I, I don't like playing against this, even though we do have two Giant Spiders. Yeah, that's just something that we'd have to race. Yeah, I, I'm just going to cut it. I don't want to play against it. Oh, now we wow. have the Prized Unicorn and the Greater Basilisk. Now, <laughs> I'm not a fan of Prized Unicorn. But I at the same time, I also don't want another 5-drop in our deck, because we have two Greater Basilisks already. Well, it's looking like this deck is going to have to be 18 lands. At the same time... Well, that's not also true. I mean, you, you consider the Cultivate and Animal Elf. I think we can get away with 17. <laughs> it's, it's I wouldn't advise <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Well, oh, we better pick something. I I'm gonna take the prize unicorn Go here because it. it's like another pseudo overrun type card. All right, sideboard draw its favor. Okay. We play against another white green deck. Oh, we could we could we could cut the the, the lava axe deck. Yeah, I don't care about that. Hornet sting. Yeah. Yeah. Something we can play. Yeah. Well, there's your answer. <laughs> take that lava axe deck. With all, we got you with all these hornet stings on our sideboard. Well, if you ever play against something like a Royal Assassin, those Hornet Stings will be useful. True, true. It's always good to consider Royal Assassin. Alright, so let's see what we've got. Well, we're gonna go to deck building any moment now. Alright, here we go. So how do you feel about how good this deck will be? Um, I'm not too impressed. Yeah, I mean, we don't have, we're not getting too tricky. I think that we're probably gonna lose to like a deck with actually good removal and like probably a blue black deck is the height is a there's a good chance we're gonna lose to that. I mean we could get the nut draw all the time with like Land War Elf cultivate to something big. Yeah, or just multiple Gareth companions. Yeah. As you could tell I'm um really big on Gareth's companion and aggro. A lot of other people think that bears aren't playable and you should avoid them whenever possible. Yeah. I actually like playing many bears. But... So you you and LSV would not get along. No. <laughs> I actually dis disagree with a lot of the things he does. He's really a control player. Green White is actually my favorite archetype to draft oh. in this format. Dude. I've drafted it four or five times out of maybe a dozen drafts. Well, there you go, folks. You heard it here first. We're drafting the Green White deck here because we got uh, Andrew Tinniki in the draft. <laughs> oh, wait. These are down here. Um, I mean, we do have a ton of bears, we, and we're one card over on if we want to play 17 lands. That's 16 creatures. I kind of want to play 18 lands. I think the worst creature left is the Silver Coat can, Lion. Can we afford to cut the splash card, or is it is our deck not powerful enough that we have to play it? Well, there's going to be triple white and double green that we'll need at the end of the also, game. Also, how do you feel about these 5 drops? Because I also don't like getting screwed over by drawing too many 5 drops. This is why I think you should play 18 lands. I think you do want to play the 5 drops. And Kay. we, we want to cut a silver coat line. This is 24 cards. You could cut the silver coat line and the lightning bolts and play 18 lands. I think that you're just going to get into too much trouble if you only play 17. Because you really need to get 5 for this deck to have a reasonable chance of winning. It's fair. Um, hmm. But the Lightning Bolt is really good, and I don't think this deck is that great, so we may have to be greedy to how, try and how, play our how best How good is Sacred Wolf in our deck? Well, it's we have good with the Mighty Leap and That's not it. that great with the Ajani because it's still only a 4-2. Yeah. I mean, it's fine with Overwhelming Stampede, because it could make our bears slightly bigger, like one power bigger, but I mean, we don't have a whole lot to do on three. I figure that if we're lucky we get to jump to three, but then most of the time it's going to be playing another bear. I don't, I think the first cut is the Silver Coat Lion. 
Now, do we want to play lightning bolts? If we played lightning bolts, how many mountains would you play here? I just play one. Because having two red sources is fine. Yeah. Um, um. Well, at least you have bombs. But yeah, I would really want to play. Like the other, lands. the other argument is put the bear back in, take out a greater basilisk, and then play seventeen lands. Because then we have less high drops. Yeah. I think we should decide what what this deck's plan is. Is this deck's plan to win quickly? I think I think it's a higher chance that we're just going to hit for small damage in the early game and win with one of our two rare bombs here. Yeah, if we need to survive till the end of the yeah. game, then we, we have the option. I we think have you want to play the lands. We, we have Vengeful Ar Archon, and we have t like possibly two other five drops that we can beat down with. So, I actually... I, let's go with that plan. I'm going to go with 17 lands and less five drops. Alright, let's that see fun? how it works. And that's our color arrangement. Let's see what Moto says. Uh, 971. I think I actually agree with Moto for the first time ever. Yeah, that seems fine. Uh, yeah. You're green I mean, gets your other colors. Yep. The only arc offer price is seven, 7 planes to get out our Vengeful Archon. Yeah, it's going to be I mean, a little bit ugly. Turn, but turn 7, we got a Cultivate, we got a Crystal Ball. We should be okay. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit sketchy. I still think that you should play 18 lands if you can in this deck, but I don't know what to cut. It would probably be the Silver Coat line if we did it. Okay. Well, let it be known, I'm good at opening a Johnny Goldbane and Vengeful Archon in the same draft, like, twice. We will uh, c come back for round one.